the head-to-head -head battle of the Gigabyte Aero 17 HDR versus the Asus ROG Strix G17 is here, and I have run each of these laptops through 14 plus creator focused benchmarks, covering video editing in Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, motion design, graphic design, photo editing, 3D modeling, and more. These two laptops are two of the best on the market if you're considering a 17 inch on the go workstation for your creative needs. Let's get rocking. <laughs> If you're new to the channel, my name is Benji Kaiser. This is where you're going to find the best tech and tools for creative professionals. If you're curious about the exact pricing or availability of either of these laptops as we're heading through this video, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do make a purchase through one of those links, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Jumping right into the build quality, each of these laptops stand out on its own. The Strix G17 with its shiny ROG face and brushed plastic top cover and the Gigabyte Aero 17 with its matte CNC aluminum top cover. Regarding which laptop I would be more comfortable with in a client meeting, I would have to lean towards the Gigabyte Aero as it has a far more professional aesthetic. Concerning the build quality, my vote also swings toward the Aero 17 with its CNC aluminum top cover, bottom cover, and keyboard deck. The Strix G17 has great build quality for an all-plastic build, but you just can't beat aluminum in my opinion. I do want to note that the Strix G model that I have in my possession is the G17 variant. The G15 and G17 share nearly identical specs, but if you are interested in some of the highlighted differences, you can check out the comparison video that I've made discussing the differences in the YouTube cards above after this video is finished, of course. Uh, each laptop comes with a generous supply of ports. However, I will say the SD card slot on the Gigabyte Aero 17 is really showing some love to videographers and photographers. So if I was going to pick a laptop based only on the ports, I would go for the Aero 17. As I open the lid on each of these laptops, I am able to do so with one hand. The hinges are smooth and strong. There's only a slight bit of screen flex on the Strix G17 and nearly zero screen flex on the Gigabyte Aero 17. Again, my hat is off to the Aero 17. Concerning the on-the-go capability of these two laptops, the Strix G17 weighs in at 6.2 pounds at a thickness of 1.02 inches thick, whereas the Gigabyte Aero 17 weighs in at 5.51 pounds at a thickness of 0.84 inches thick. Concerning battery life, the Strix G17 will get roughly five hours of web browsing battery life and about two and a half to three hours of design and video editing out of its 66 watt hour battery. Whereas the Gigabyte Aero 17 will get roughly six and a half to seven hours of web browsing battery life and about four to five hours of design and video editing with its 94.24 watt hour battery. Before we move on to the screen quality, I want to discuss the ventilation of these two laptops. Both the Strix G and the Aero 17 have generous vents for cooling. They both have vents on the bottom cover, behind the keyboard deck, and on the top of the keyboard deck. But the Aero 17 has a vent on both side panels, whereas the Strix G only has a vent on the right side panel. The question begs how noisy are these fans and how well do they cool the laptop during the benchmark test coming up later in the video. At idle, both fans kick quietly on to about 35 to 40 decibels. During the 4K video editing export in Premiere Pro, the Aero 17 and the Strix G17 ramp up to 56 decibels. During the DaVinci Resolve export, the fans on the Aero 17 were at 56 decibels and the Strix G were at 58 decibels. Now, the Photoshop benchmark test, the Aero was at 54 decibels, and the Strix G was at 57 decibels. Now to check how well the fans did cooling the components during those different tests, here are the benchmark results. All right, now that we've covered those details, let's get into the screen quality. The Gigabyte Aero 17 HDR comes with a 17.3 inch Ultra HD 4K display that can reach 60 Hertz. And at full brightness, it can reach 531 nits with a Pantone validated color gamut range of 100% sRGB, 100% Adobe RGB, and 89% DCI-P3, all in an average Delta E of 0.48. 
For a gaming laptop, this is mind-blowing, and it's why it gets my hat tip for being one of the best gaming laptops for creative professionals. The Strix G is no slouch either, though, coming with a 17.3-inch Full HD screen that can reach a refresh rate of 144 Hz. Concerning the brightness and quality of the screen, it can reach 325 nits at full brightness and has a color gamut range of 98% sRGB, 75% Adobe RGB, and 75% DCI-P3, all an average Delta E of 1.95. Regarding these two screens, this Strix G17 will be great if you are a creative that also dabbles in some gaming due to the higher screen refresh rate. If you don't game, or perhaps you do, but not that often, then you can't beat the Gigabyte Arrow's insane color gamut range. Both of these laptops have full keyboards, including the numpad. They have slightly different configurations of the keys. The Aero 17 has all the keys bunched together in a clean, aesthetically pleasing cluster, whereas the Strix G allows the keys to set out past the cluster. Personally, I like the organization of the Aero 17, but that is really splitting hairs. The typing experience on both keyboards is nearly identical in feel. I like the key press. It is smooth and snappy with a medium length in the key press. I will note that the Gigabyte Aero 17 is slightly quieter while typing, so if you are in an office or classroom setting, that will be a benefit to you. I've also noticed that there's a more of a soft touch material on the Gigabyte Aero compared to the Strix G17, so it feels nicer on your fingers. Both keyboards come with customizable RGB lighting, which equally looks great. The trackpads, on the other hand, are completely different animals. The Aero 17 comes with an all-in-one trackpad, and the Strix G comes with a trackpad and dedicated left and right click setup. This is honestly a very hard decision. On one hand, I think the Aero 17 has a wonderful trackpad with solid touch gestures and responsive built-in click. But on the other hand, I really like the dedicated left and right click buttons of the Strix G17. I think having a dedicated left and right click is great for dragging and dropping, working in the timeline while video editing and more. I'm going to draw a tie on this one and let you decide what you like more personally. If you are needing a laptop to attend virtual meetings, then you are going to want to select the Aero 17 as it is the only one with a 720p webcam in this head-to-head -head battle. If you're enjoying this video and getting some value gently, ever so gently press down on that like button and let me know how you plan on using this laptop by dropping a comment below. If you want more content like this in the future, then make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Let's get back into it. Now, before we get into the performance specs, I want to talk about Gigabyte's AI capabilities. Gigabyte has partnered with the Microsoft Azure Cloud to collect data on the apps you use in order for the computer to automatically optimize components so that you get the most performance out of this laptop. Now, this is an optional benefit. You do not have to allow your computer to share information with the Azure Cloud, but it does come with the large benefit of getting more performance out of your laptop. The thought is that different users will use different apps and the laptop can tailor the component interaction in those apps to get the most out of them. The Asus Rogue Strix G17 I'm reviewing comes with the Intel 10th Gen Core i7-10750H with 6 cores and 12 threads, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 with 8 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, 32 gigs of RAM, and 2 terabytes of SSD, whereas the Gigabyte Aero 17 HDRXB comes with the Intel Core i7-10875H with 8 cores and 16 threads, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super Max Q with 8 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig solid state drive. As you can see, the Strix G has slightly better specs regarding the GPU and RAM, but I did not want to hold this review back from y'all that you have been asking for, so here it is. Jumping right into the 3D modeling test, let's take a look at how well these two laptops handle Autodesk and a few other programs. The G17 scored an Autodesk 3DS Max score of 154.31, the Aero 17 with a 168.82. For Autodesk Maya, the G17 scored a 177.5, and the Aero 17 a 213.75. PTC Creo, the G17 scored a 148.53, and the Aero 17 a 168.88. And for SOLIDWORKS, the G17 is 70.47 and the Aero 17 an 86.84. 3D modeling was a close battle, but as you can see, the Gigabyte Aero 17 pulled out in front with that slightly beefier i7-10875H. Moving on to motion design, I'm using Puget Systems After Effects Benchmark and the After Effects Render Benchmark. Per the charts, you can see that the Aero 17 pulled slightly ahead of the Strix G17, but not by much. The Aero 17 scored a 806 over the Strix G17's 778. Things change a little bit when looking at the After Effects render test results. The Strix G, with its slightly beefier RTX 2070, 
full mobile expression versus the Aero 17's Max Q variant, was able to put a little space between these two laptops by scoring a 664 and the Aero 17 snagging a 652. Just before moving on to the video editing test, let's take a look to see how well these laptops perform in Adobe's design suite by benchmarking them with the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark. Both laptops perform well, but the Gigabyte Aero 17 pulled ahead by over 100 points, scoring a 788 over the Strix G17's 679. Both of these laptops are strong contenders if you're looking for a Photoshop laptop. You can also use this reference if you're considering other design or photography focused software, such as Affinity Photo, Sketch, or Figma. Now onto my favorite benchmark tests, video editing. First, I'm going to start off with a playback test. For this test, I'm gonna use a nine minute 4K clip, adding some motion graphics, and then playing it back in the timeline at full quality. This full clip contains 16,177 frames in total, with 7,240 of those frames being motion graphics. The Strix G17 can play back full quality 4K footage in Premiere Pro without any drop frames, thanks to the powerful RTX 2070 GPU. The Gigabyte Aero 17 saw nearly just as impressive results, only dropping four frames during the entire 4K playback test with its NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super Max Q GPU. You might see some more drop frames while multitasking, but you can easily switch to half or fourth quality to continue to get smooth playback in the timeline. Concerning the rendering of motion design effects, I was able to render out 7,240 frames in just 3 minutes and 18 seconds using the Strix G, and a little bit faster out of the Gigabyte Aero 17 at 2 minutes and 43 seconds. Moving on to the 4K export test, I'm going to take a 9 minute 4K clip, place it into Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, using the free version of DaVinci Resolve, then export both out at 1080p and 4K YouTube settings. The G17 Premiere Pro 4K to 4K saw a 2 minute and 49 second export, and the Aero 17 saw a 2 minute and 57 second export. G17 Premiere Pro 4K to 1080p saw a 56 second export, and the Aero 17 a 3 minute and 22 second export. The G17 DaVinci Resolve 4K to 4K export, 9 minutes and 47 seconds. The Aero 17, 8 minutes and 27 seconds. The G17 DaVinci Resolve 4K to 1080p export, 4 minutes and 11 seconds. The Aero 17, 5 minutes and 3 seconds. The component combination of the Strix G is lightning fast, but so is the Gigabyte Aero 17. Now regarding thermal performance during the 4K video edit, you can see that the Strix G17 is running at 81 degrees Celsius during the stabilized temps, whereas the Aero 17 stabilizes at 76 degrees Celsius. The Aero 17 and the Strix G17 run the fans at the same decibels, reaching 56 during the 4K out of DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. Here are the component usage results for some of the tests conducted in this video. If you're looking for a high performance laptop with a large 17 inch screen with a solid color accuracy, great benchmarks in all of the tests performed and a distinguished build quality, then I would pick up the Asus ROG Strix G17. However, if you're looking for an aluminum laptop that performs cool and fairly quiet while getting great benchmark results in Photoshop, video editing, 3D modeling, and motion design, all packed with a very bright and Pantone verified 100% sRGB, Adobe RGB, and 89% DCI P3 screen, plus it comes in at a substantially thin and light package for a 17-inch laptop, then you'll want to pick up the Gigabyte Aero 17 HDR XB. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of either of these laptops, you can head down in the description below, click one of those links, and of course, if you do make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you, and that's what keeps this channel live and the helpful content coming your way. If you're curious about more videos of the Gigabyte Aero 17 or the Strix G17, click or tap the screen over here. Otherwise, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. I'm Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next episode.